I have two lectures. Both of these lectures, one is meaning modes, monotony, and myth. The other is software posture. For both of these, what you need to know is in these PowerPoints. So in particularly, meaning modes, monotony, and myths, is a, the PowerPoints are a little bit more detailed than usual. But questions that I use on the final exam that come from this lecture are directly from this PowerPoint. Feel free to read your supplemental material if you find it really interesting. All right, any questions before we get started with our lecture? Nope? Okay, awesome. All right, so meaning modes, mono uh, monotony, and myths. When you look at computing technology, right, a lot of times we just think of as coding or taking a server, getting it ready for it to be you know, used for multiple users. We want to go, go and test it, to deploy it, and those sorts of things. However, when we are doing some various forms of testing and various forms of design, there are some other aspects that you may or may not encounter out in industry, depending on the type of position that you take. That's why I like including this lecture and the next lecture, because it has a major impact, or can have a major impact on how you design systems. There are just more things that you want to think about, particularly in terms of how is it that the user experiences some of these aspects, such as modes, when we're using a product. Because for usability, if you want good usability, you really do need to think about these things. They tend to be a little more abstract, so we tend to forget about them. Now, the first two slides in this particular lecture, I actually considered taking out because I usually would pair it with a different lecture that I decided to eliminate. However, I decided to go ahead and keep it for two reasons. One is because the type of nomenclature that's talked about in these two slides, it's, it is very straightforward, but you may actually encounter it even if you are not dealing with things like the GOMS model, which is what I took out, which I can put back in if you want. Very exciting. But in looking at how we evaluate interfaces, this is the type of nomenclature that is sometimes used. So I do want you to at least have a basic understanding of how it works. So let's take a look at it. Well, first, there is this thing, this uh, term, called a graphical input device, or a GID. Does anyone want, want to take a guess as to what that is? Very fancy sounding, right? Well, to put it simply, it's anything that you use to communicate with your computer or a computerized device. I usually think of it as a mouse. So a mouse is a graphical input device. Now, it's not necessarily just a mouse. Of course, we have trackballs. We have keyboards. These days, we even have our fingers. Right? It can be a tablet pen, it can be a joystick. Basically, anything that we use to interact with computing technology, particularly graphical interfaces. You know, anything that we want to use to move the mouse around, right? Ch move, you know, change pages, change what we're doing with a particular program. Now, when it comes to a GID, we have, of course, a GID button. What is that? Fancy name for a mouse button, right? Or a trackball button, or even a keyboard key. I know, why did they come up with these names? I don't know. Probably because we, they know technology is going to continue changing. And it's very, very simple. So. A GID button is, for example, a left button on the mouse. Now, there are some notations for depressing a button. I know, very exciting, right? And it is a very logical arrow down. So if you see that, it just means you're depressing a button. It could be depressing. Usually, it's depressing a key, which is what we're going to focus on. It basically means you're pushing down. Releasing it is 
the opposite, an arrow that's going up. Now, with this notation, as you'll see in the next slide, we do use this notation to note a number of things. So is it a tap, is it a click, is it a drag, is it a double click? All of these use this notation for representing something that we are doing with an input device. Now I had mentioned that there are some more complex ways of using this, but I'm just going to stick to the basics since you don't have to worry about the GOMS model, for example. So let's just look at some examples because that's going to be a lot easier than me sitting here and talking more about some amorphous arrow that goes up and down and uh, input device and so on and so forth. So let's imagine that we are going to be typing a sequence of keys on a keyboard. So let's say, let me see, I can't reach up there. Let's say you decide that you're going to type the word cat. Very simple, right? This is the long notation. C, you're pressing the, 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 the uh, letter C down. Now you're releasing the C. See these two here? Now you're pressing the A. Then you're releasing the A. Then you're pressing the T. Now releasing the T. Now, how many of you want to write all of that every single time? No, not really. Now, because of that, you can simplify this notation. But you have to make sure that there is not any ambiguity. Now, for something like cat, it's pretty easy. So if we look here, instead of having C arrow down, C arrow up, we just have C down and up. That notes that we are depressing the key and we are releasing the key. Very simple. So again, with A it's the same and with T it's the same. Now you can even simplify it even more, which is my favorite because it's quicker and easier. Right? You can eliminate your arrows if you are tapping keys as long as there's no ambiguity. So if you have a sequence of keys, if you're just typing cat, you can just put C-A-T. But again, <laughs> making sure there's not ambiguity is the key. So we're going to go through a quick notation. Oh, let me mention one, one other thing. I almost forgot about this one. Sometimes you can also shorten things if, let's say, you have multiple keys depressed and you can release all of them at the same time and it doesn't matter the order. In that case, you can just put a bunch of arrows right next to each other. So in this example, here you're pressing the control key and holding it down, pressing the shift key while you're still holding the control key, and pressing the escape key while you are still holding the shift and control keys. And then you're releasing them all at the same time. So let's do our quick exercise. Interpret this sequence. Press shift. Now what? Holding down. You're holding shift down. You're pressing N. When are you releasing N? Right, so this is a tap. You're, now, are you still holding shift? Yes. Yes. Now what's this? Now you're holding control down. Are you holding the shift down? Yes. Are you holding the N down? No. All right, now what? You're tapping K. Now what? You're let going of shift. Are you still holding anything down? Now what? Tap W. And let go of control. Now are you holding anything? No. Awesome. This makes such a good exam question. It's really easy to grade. Did I mention that was the second reason I'm keeping it? You know, I have to make things easy for myself too, right? All right, so if you see a nomenclature like this, what you're talking about is how we are interacting with, a, with computing technology. And typically, this is used for, in general, two different things. One is if you are trying to time how long it takes for users to perform a specific action using a particular input device, 
keeping in mind that you are assuming they will not make an error. That is where things like the GOMS model would have come in. If you're interested, feel free to look it up. The other thing that this is sometimes used for, not as often, but that is sometimes used for, is to make it clear if you are talking about particularly <coughs> what set of keys or what set of gestures, we'll define gestures in a minute, what set of gestures are used for a particular control operation, you may see this type of nomenclature. So for example, when Microsoft was deciding whether they were going to use, you know, use the control alternate delete, they probably used a nomenclature similar to this to indicate that and make it clear that you would be holding down all of them at the same time. So it's one of those things you may encounter it when you work out, work out in industry, you may not, but it's a good thing at least to know just the basics. All right, any questions? 